Hey everyone! In today's video, we are going to share with you our top tips for sailing on Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas cruise ship and help you have the best cruise vacation you possibly can. In this video, we are going to talk about when to check out and when to avoid certain activities on board, tips for complimentary food and specialty dining on board, we'll talk about the drink package, and about if plans change due to weather and how to prepare for seasickness, and so much more. We're here to share our experience with you and help you plan ahead and have the best vacation ever. If you haven't already, check out our Wonder of the Seas full guide video that we posted with complete introductions and overviews of everything on the ship, or our Wonder of the Seas video that shows you what the ship would look like at maximum capacity on board, as we offered some tips in those videos as well. In this video, we'll jump right into our tips to help you plan your exciting upcoming cruise. So let's get into it. Tip number one, how to have a smooth embarkation day. Embarkation day is so exciting and when you first step onto the ship, it's almost overwhelming as you take it all in. But when we board a Royal Caribbean ship, Greg and I have a couple of quick errands that we complete right away so that we can just enjoy ourselves and kick off our vacation worry-free. The first thing we do is complete our muster drill safety video the morning of our cruise before we even get on the ship. That way, once we're on the ship, we can check into our muster station and have that out of the way. This is extremely important and you can't sail if you don't complete your muster drill as safety is the top priority. Once our muster drill is done, we book any specialty dining that we would like during the week. These could fill up fast if you have a busier cruise sailing. There are kiosks in the Royal Promenade to do this, or you can go straight to any of the restaurants on board and book your specialty dining options for the week there. We like to get this done right away so that we have peace of mind that we can eat at all the restaurants we want it to during our cruise. If you don't do this right away, it doesn't mean you won't get to eat where you want, but this did help us get to have all the dining times that we wanted and not need to try and keep searching for a last minute cancellation throughout our cruise. Once these couple of what we call our errands are done, we grab a drink, explore the ship, and kick off our vacation. Tip number two, when to enjoy or go to certain activities or venues on board. So as we just mentioned in our last tip, embarkation day is exciting. Everyone is getting on the ship and overwhelmed with all the fun things to do. You and 7,000 other people are extremely excited to check out everything on board. So here are some tips for what to avoid and when to try instead. On embarkation day, some of your fun activities or venues like the Bionic bar, which is the robot bar on board, or the Rising Tide bar, the elevator bar that goes from the Royal Promenade to Central Park neighborhood on board, or maybe even the Abyss slide, which is a dry slide that goes from deck 16 all the way down to the boardwalk on deck 6, are all going to be extremely busy because everyone is so excited to check these out. Our tip is to not stress about hitting all of these fun activities right away on day one, but also don't save all these activities to the last day either, as it is just as busy on the last day of your cruise. On our Harmony of the Seas sailing, I tried to cram in the Abyss slide and cram in the zip line and make sure I had checked out everything on the last day of our cruise, and that's when everyone's trying to cram in those last minute vacation memories. So when should you check out these activities? We would say on any days other than the first and last day of your cruise. And if you really want to enjoy them with less lines, it's better on port days while they're open. We noticed that mini golf or the carousel, for example, are less crowded in the evenings compared to during the day. If you want to enjoy activities throughout the day like game shows or trivia, the smaller venues like Spotlight Karaoke and the Schooner Bar will fill up fast, so try to get there early. But activities that take place in the Aqua Theater, the Royal Theater, or the Ice Skating Rink will have lots of space, so don't stress. This tip applies to guest services as well, but sometimes you can't avoid it if there's a problem or something you need help with. However, if you can, avoid guest services on day one, day six, and day seven, as those are the days of the cruise where the lines will be very lengthy. Tip number three, navigating the food on board. Let's dive into our favorite topic and share some tips about the food on board, both about the complimentary venues and the specialty dining venues on board. First, let's start with breakfast. Breakfast can sometimes feel a bit chaotic as there are less places open for breakfast than there are for lunches and dinners. On sea days, you can have a complimentary formal sit-down breakfast in the main dining room. If you eat here, we highly recommend the French toast. It's thick-cut brioche toast with berry compote and was the better item on the menu. I wouldn't recommend to order the eggs Benedict as it was just okay. The Windjammer Buffet is up on deck 15 and is the large buffet on board, and as we mentioned in our prior videos, it's certainly the most chaotic. This is most people's go-to location for breakfast, and while they have the best options and variety, it can feel like a lot when you first wake up. I would also recommend avoiding the Windjammer on embarkation day when you first get on board, as that's where everyone tends to flock to. We recommend to try the Solarium Bistro for breakfast, which is also on deck 15 and is a smaller buffet 
day. This place also is very busy but was smaller than the Windjammer and had some more peaceful seating outside. Our top recommendation for breakfast is to go to Johnny Rockets Diner on the boardwalk. Johnny Rockets cost an extra fee for lunch and dinner, but did you know their breakfast is complimentary? This was a nice option to enjoy a sit-down breakfast on the boardwalk without the chaos of the buffets. The breakfast meals we had here were pretty good too, and we felt they were much better than the main dining room options. For dinner, the main dining room is the main spot to go and is your formal sit-down meal that's complimentary and included in your cruise fare. Before your cruise, you can book traditional early dining or late dining depending on your preference, or opt for my time dining, but you may need to wait for a table to open up. The food in the main dining room is complimentary. You can order more than one appetizer, entree, or dessert. If you're torn between a couple of things, go ahead and order them both. Or if you received your meal and you didn't enjoy it, the servers are more than happy to bring you something else. The only exception that you can't order more than one of is the lobster tail on lobster night. This used to be unlimited, but now it's just one lobster tail per guest unless you want to pay an additional fee. However, on lobster night, a pro tip is I ordered the steak entree and the lobster tail from the lobster entree and had surf and turf. Greg did the same but with the fish entree instead of the steak. Let's talk about a couple of pro tips for some of the other complimentary dining options on board. As we mentioned in the past, Greg's favorite place on board is Sorrento's Pizza which is open late into the night for a late night bite. This is a great complimentary option to grab slices of pizza for a meal, but did you know you can also order a full pizza to go? If you wanted to order a pizza for your family and head back to your room or somewhere else on the ship, you can do this. My favorite spot on board is Promenade Cafe for my specialty coffees. However, in the morning, this is very busy. Head up one more deck to the Vitality Cafe in the spa area, where they also serve specialty coffees and beat some of the morning rush in the Royal Promenade. If you need your Starbucks fix, you're in luck. There's also a Starbucks on board, but this does cost extra. However, you can use your Starbucks gift cards here, which is a nice little perk if you have some. A couple of pro tips for the specialty restaurants on board is that you can also order multiple dishes here. Trying the different appetizers is our favorite thing to do as there are so many great options on the menus. We've also opted to split a second entree between us if there was ever anything we were torn on, but we've always been way too full for a second dessert. We love trying new things and once you pay the cover charge of the restaurant, most things are included in the cost. We also recommend to try the signature drinks or cocktails at each specialty restaurant if they have them. We have specialty dining reviews on our channel if you want further recommendations or tips on each one. Tip number four, getting some sun on the pool deck. I cover covered this a lot in our video, what's wonder of the seas like at full capacity, so I won't spend too much of my time repeating myself again for those of you who have watched it already. But the pool deck is going to be absolutely packed on sea days, so if you want a lounge chair, we recommend to get up bright and early and going to get your pool chair. However, please don't save chairs all day, only enjoy the pool deck as you need it while you want to sit out. If everyone cycled between the pool chairs, food, or shows, then there would be more options available for people to sit. But as you get later in the morning, the pool deck will use usually be filled up. As we mentioned in our other video, if you want some sun away from the crowds, you could head to the back of the ship on the sports deck. Tip number five, expecting weather can happen and plans could change. One thing a cruise ship can't control is the weather. Weather happens, and sometimes this can impact a port day and maybe your port is canceled. On our sailing this year on Wonder of the Seas, the port cancellation was sadly perfect day at Coco Cay because it was too windy to safely dock. The captain had waited to see if the wind would die down and it didn't. Coco Cay is Royal Caribbean's private island and is so much fun. This is a highlight for a lot of people when booking a cruise. However, when the captain of the ship says something is not safe, I'm going to go with what the captain says as I want to be safe. There were so many upset people on our cruise when Coco Cay got cancelled. We get it. It's a huge disappointment when you're looking forward to something. But the weather is something that can't be controlled. Remember, Royal Caribbean makes a lot of money off of Coco Cay. They didn't cancel this port because they wanted to. Instead, be flexible. Remember that at the end of the day, plans can change and you're on a cruise ship. During the cancelled port day, Royal Caribbean added extra shows and opened up the specialty dining locations for lunches. Maybe treat yourself to a special specialty dining lunch if this happens, or check out an extra show or two. Don't let weather ruin the cruise that you waited so long for. Things happen and it's better than being at home. Also, if it rains, the weather usually will clear up shortly. Don't panic. Tip number six, speaking of weather, let's talk about getting seasick. The biggest question I get asked when going on a cruise is, don't you get seasick? The answer is no, not really. My first couple of cruises, I didn't even feel the ship move once, and that includes another huge Oasis class cruise ship. That was due to beautiful weather and smooth sailing. However, we sailed in February this time around, and as I mentioned earlier, Coco Cay was cancelled due to weather, so that meant the conditions weren't always amazing. There were times on this sailing I could feel the ship move a little bit, and I did hear 
people on the sailing were feeling a bit under the weather. I'm someone who is extremely prone to motion sickness and can get motion sick even in a car. I did not get seasick this entire cruise, including on the yucky weather days. However, if you are prone to motion sickness, be prepared. Bring gravel, Dramamine, or whatever motion sickness medication your local pharmacy recommends. They also recommend to eat a green apple to help avoid nausea. Green apples are always available at complimentary dining locations like the Windjammer Buffet or Park Cafe. Tip number seven, consider if the drink package is cost effective for you. This is a controversial one and it really comes down to the individual person and their preferences and we'll have a future in-depth video on this. The drink package could save you money. The lower drink package is the soda package which just includes your Coke Freestyle Machine beverages. The next drink package up would be the refreshment package which you can use to try freshly squeezed orange juice each morning with your breakfast or try some mocktails. You can also pop into Johnny Rockets without purchasing a meal to have one of their famous milkshakes or maybe you want to try some smoothies or fresh juices at the Vitality Cafe. But this also go towards specialty coffees at Promenade Cafe or maybe some Powerades or sparkling water and also just regular bottled water or soda. The next drink package up from that would be called the Deluxe Drink Package and this includes everything I already mentioned plus your drinks containing alcohol. But when thinking about the drink package, make sure to consider the difference between packages as well. Most people think of the Deluxe Drink Package and only consider how many alcoholic drinks per day they would need to drink to get their money back. However, try considering how many bottles of water you drink per day or specialty coffees and consider if you want to have fresh juices or smoothies. And then the Deluxe Package is only a couple of drinks per day difference from the Refreshment Package and you're free to try drinks without worrying about the cost as you go. The Drink Package was more cost effective for us in the long run and stress-free. We're also Canadian so it really helped with the exchange. Towards the end of our sailing, they did offer a 10 drink package but this is not something that's guaranteed. Tip number eight, use the Royal Caribbean app. If you use the app during your cruise, this will really come in handy. You don't have to have the internet package in order to use the Royal Caribbean app. The app will share menus of the restaurants and bars and share all the activities going on each day in your cruise compass. This will help you decide which shows or activities you want to see and if you have an Apple Watch, it'll send notifications to your watch. You can also message members of your travel party through this app, which is nice if you don't have the internet package and you can still plan where to meet up for dinner. We didn't purchase the internet package during our cruise, but we did notice if you had an iPhone that iMessages were able to successfully send even if someone in our party wasn't on the ship. I wouldn't say this is something you could rely on always working, but it was a very happy surprise that we were still able to do iMessage while on our cruise and we could check in on how our fur babies were doing at home. Tip number nine, book excursions through Royal Caribbean directly. We talked about this in our video called five tips to help you plan your Royal Caribbean cruise. So if you haven't seen that video already, make sure to go check it out if you're still in the planning phase of your cruise. When booking an excursion, consider booking directly through Royal Caribbean. I know it costs extra, but think of it as insurance. If something happens while you're in port, then Royal Caribbean is responsible for getting you back on the ship. We did the opposite during our last cruise and while in St. Martin, there was massive traffic jams and it took two hours to get back to the ship when it should have only taken 15 to 20 minutes. For peace of mind, book through Royal Caribbean and you won't have to stress. Tip number 10, if you forget anything at home, there are vending machines on board. These are really neat and found up on deck 16. If you forget something at home like medicine or toiletries, it's probably here for you to pick up. It can be pricey though, so try to remember to pack these items, but it is a nice backup option. They even have magnetic lashes, baseball cards, and Pokemon cards. Now it's time for a quick bonus tip, which is to look for or hide cruise ducks. People hide little rubber ducks all over the ship and you can find them and either keep them or rehide them. Kids were having so much fun finding these during our sailing and Greg was having a blast rehiding them for them. There was also a Corvette club on our sailing who hid Hot Wheel cars, which was really cute. We hope this video helps you plan your cruise on Wonder of the Seas. If you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate if you would hit the like button and subscribe to follow along on our next adventure. We have a playlist on our sailing for Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas cruise ship, as well as a playlist of our Harmony of the Seas sailing. So make sure to check those out. If you like Disney, theme parks, food, and travel, check out our channel. Thanks for watching.